Right, let's go. So for today's tutorial uh, number two, um, I will be talking about heat engine cycles. So the heat engine cycles are, we have two main heat engine cycles. So the first one is um, the auto cycle. where the second one is the diesel cycle. If you guys have any question, just um, turn on the mic, turn on your mic and uh, ask your question because I cannot see the chat box, all right? So for the auto cycle, uh, the main application for auto cycle is cars, um, scars, uh, while uh, diesel cycle engines is trucks, all right? So, where we have heavy duty, heavy duties cars, and here we have light duties cars. We also call it um, spark ignition engine. Why this one we call it? Compression ignition engine. Compression ignition engine. So um, basically the difference between auto cycle and diesel cycle is the um, how the combustion stroke take place, right? So the combustion stroke, so let me just draw um, the, the, the most important diagram for the auto cycle is the uh, PV pressure volume. Pressure volume. So, so the first stroke we have is the compression stroke from one to two and we call this volume is v1 and that one is v2 v1 is corresponding to the top dead center and v2 is corresponding to bottom dead center where this is the maximum volume and that is the minimum, right? So this is the compression stroke and then combustion or heat addition is taking place at constant volume. So QN, this is the amount of fuel enter the combustion chamber of the engine. Um, QN is gonna be burned and release a certain amount of heat and from three to four is the expansion stroke. So from one to two isentropic um, compression, two to three um, constant volume heat addition, three to four isentropic expansion, four to one heat rejection, where 
the residual gases and heats um, or the exhaust gases are going exhaust or going to be vented to the atmosphere. Q out. So for the diesel engine, So for the diesel engine, we have, if we draw the PV diagram, uh, similar to, to the auto cycle, the first stroke is always isentropic expansion, uh, isentropic compression, where we increase the pressure and temperature of the mixture of air and fuel, then the second stroke from three to four is heat addition, where heat addition here taking place at constant pressure. P is constant. Here, V is constant. All right. And then from three to four, Um, isentropic um, expansion from four to one, Q rejection or Q out, Q rejected or out is the same. So if we, uh, let me just write it here. So one, two. So the three constant volume um, heat addition. Do you guys have any questions so far? So now. Three to four isentropic expansion. Four to one is heat rejection. All right, it's going to be similar here. One to two isentropic compression. Two to three constant pressure. Heat. Addition. Three to four isentropic expansion. And four to one is heat rejection. Right. When it comes to the equations, I'm gonna um, going to just I'm going to write the common equations that we have to use. All right. So from one to two. So uh, first of all, we have to identify the compression ratio. Compression ratio. In auto cycle, oh, sorry. So the compression ratio in auto cycle all right, so the compression ratio in auto cycle is R equal to V1 over V2, which is V maximum over V minimum. All right, uh, we call this one is compression dish. All right, so from one to two, isentropic compression, 
isentropic conversion. So we have to uh, um, apply the isentropic relations uh, from the thermodynamics. So the isentropic relation based on the temperature and the pressure in terms of um, the conversion ratio and gamma. Gamma is the um, specific heat ratio. So T2 over T1 is equal to R to the power gamma minus one and B2 over P1 is equal to R to the power gamma. So for simplification, gamma, we assume air, assume ideal gas, gamma is 1.4 and also and also cp is 1.005 kilojoule per kilogram kelvin and cv you have to memorize these values right so we're not going to give any giving we're not going to give you these values in the in the final exam. So this is the gamma specific heat ratio. Cp is the specific heat at constant pressure for air, assuming ideal gas, air, assuming all air um, flowing inside of the cycle. And Cv is the specific heat at constant volume. All right. So for the second stroke, th that's for the first stroke. For the second stroke from two to three. Heat addition. At constant volume. We apply first law of thermodynamics. Q from two to three is equal to Q input, which is the input, the input heat to the engine is equal to M C V T three minus T two. Uh, and also Q in Q in is equal sometimes is equal to m dot few multiplied by the calorific value, which is the amount of heat um, released while burning one kilogram of uh, of that fuel. This is the calorific value. So this is for the heat addition part. And also because it, it, it is happening at a constant volume. So if we write, if you want to relate point two with point three, it's gonna be through the ideal gas equation or the equation of state, which is P3 V3 is equal to MRT3. And this is one, the other one is B2 V2 is equal to MRT2. And if we divide both of them all, because volume, the volume at two and three is constant as per the diagram here, because the volume is constant here at heat addition. So we can relate P3 over P2 is equal to T3 over T2. Right. So take care if you want to get um, sometimes he's asking about the maximum temperature. Sometimes he's asking about the maximum temperature. And um, and uh, there is two ways to get the maximum temperature. So this is one way and this is the other way. Right. Sometimes he's asking about the pressure at point three. So we can get T3 from this equation and come back here into this equation while knowing all other um, parameters. So to get P3, right? So take care, take care about, about this. And for the expansion, I have also isentropic expansion from three to four isentropic expansion. It's going to be also P4 over P3 is equal to 1 over R to the power gamma. And T4 over T3 is equal to 1 over R to the power gamma minus 1. 
and from four to one is heat rejection. So the heat rejection is Q out MCV because it's a constant volume, T4 minus T1. All right, sometimes he's asking about uh, the heat rejection. Okay, so this is one thing about the, um, um, yeah, do you guys have any questions for the equations that has to be used for, um, for the auto cycle? For the diesel cycle, I'm going to do the same, exactly the same, just highlighting the most important, uh, the most important things. So for the diesel cycle, um, from one to two is going to be the same, same as auto cycle because isentropic compression, isentropic compression here. So from two to three is the um, heat addition. I just wanna see how many of you guys are attending. So, you know, is everything is clear with you guys? You have any questions so far? All right, so it sounds good. Okay. So, for the heat attention constant, so we are talking about this stroke, okay? Heat addition at constant pressure. So, this basically is going to be Q from two to three is equal to MCP, specifically that constant pressure. T3 minus T2, while here, here I write it in terms of CV, right? So here is CV because it's heat addition at constant volume and here is CP, heat addition at constant pressure, okay? Uh, and for, I have to identify another term here, Pita. Pita is the V3 over V2, or we call it the cutoff ratio. Here V3, here is V2, this is V1, that's V3, and that's V2, right? So this uh, Pita is the cutoff ratio. And uh, this Pita is basically a function, is basically uh, when we I did when we write the efficiency of a diesel engine is going to is going to be a function of one over it's going to be a function of r gamma and this beta. So I'm I'm going to uh, solve two problems. The first one is auto cycle. The second one is diesel cycle. Um, I'll try my best to uh, clarify everything about the concept, about the equations that you have to use if you got um, an auto problem in your exam or if you got a basic problem in your exam. All right, so um, I think uh, I will be solving equation number one, equation, uh, problem number one and problem number three. Do, do you have any questions so far? Oh, sorry. So also Q rejection is going to be the same. Uh, Q uh, from three to four, same as auto cycle. Q from four to one. Same as auto cycle. Sounds good. All right, so problem number one. All right, we have an um, auto cycle. Uh, 
and um, given to you the mass limit of the few kilogram and calorific value of the com heat of combustion, Q combustion of this fuel is 45,000 kilojoule per kilogram. So this, this Q of combustion is um, the amount of heat in kilojoule released if we burn one kilogram of, uh, of this fuel, right? And when you multiply both of them, you're gonna get Qn, which is the amount of heat added into the combustion chamber or into the engine during the combustion stroke. And also given to you V1, 0.15 uh, meter cube, given to you V2, 1.5, 10 to the negative three meter cube, given to you also T1 is 300 Kelvin and given to you air to fuel ratio, which is 16 um, gamma is 1.4 for air, of course, CV is 0.717. Um, this is give, given to you here, but it's not gonna be given in the exam. So you have to memorize these values. So what is requested in this problem is T3, T and P3 and P1 and also um, you say comment on P1, right? So I'm gonna leave the comment till, till the end. Okay. So from here, how how can I get? Um, so if we start from the beginning, um, in any auto or diesel cycle uh, problems, you have to use uh, the isentropic relation, all right? So you're gonna get something out of it, right? So right now we have, uh, first of all, you need to draw the cycle itself, right? So it auto cycle, as I, as I showed you before, so just draw the cycle and know your knowns and unknowns and you can see uh, what you can get, right? So that's P, V diagram, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four, right? So um, in order to get T3, T3, as I told you, is gonna be shown in here in the heat addition, uh, in the heat addition um, phase or stroke. So this is gonna be solved by. So let me let me let me try it this way. All right. So in order to get T3, this is gonna be um, shown in the equation. Uh, for the heat addition. So Q from the heat addition Q from 2 to 3 is equal to Q input Q in uh, M CP T3 minus T2. Well, we, we, we don't know anything here. So uh, Q in as I told you is M fuel multiplied by Q of combustion or the calorific value. So this is known right now. So seven multiplied by 10 to the negative five multiplied by Q of combustion, 45,000 kilojoule per kilogram. Kilojoule per kilogram, why this is in kilograms. So this is gonna be canceled out with this. So you're gonna, you're gonna be left with 3.15 kilojoule. That's the amount of QN. Right, so this is known right now. So we don't know M, we don't know the mass, but we know something about the mass. We know the air to fuel ratio, right? And we know M fuel. So this air to fuel ratio is M dot air or M air 
over m fuel, right? So we have m fuel, so we can get m air from here. So this one thing. Excuse me, sir. I just have one question. Hey, go ahead. Um, for finding that Q in, how come we don't have um, the res the fraction of residual or whatever it was called incorporated in there? Um, so what I'm um, solving right now is a just simple que simple question where there is no residual on it, right? But oh. uh, um, question number five, there is question, there is a residual on it. And, um, and but this question doesn't have any residual. So it's gonna be stated clearly in the problem statement that uh, there is a, either there is a residual or not. But this one, there is no residual at all for this problem particularly. Okay, so, so if it doesn't specify, then we assume no residual? There is no residual, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, sometimes, sometimes in some cases, if you um, if you stuck, all right, and you didn't know how to how to get the um, um, we can say or I can say if you stuck and you didn't know how to get the masses, um, you can also neglect the mass of the fuel because the mass of the fuel, as compared to the mass of the air is look at the mass of the fuel is very very small so you, you can neglect I'm, I'm not telling you, you you have to but if you got stuck and you don't know how to get the, the fuel mass for it so you just can get that all right so so this m here yeah thank you for the question it's very important so the mass here is m air plus m fuel so knowing that the air to fuel ratio is 16, so m dot air is 16 multiplied by m dot fuel. So the total mass is m dot air, which is 16, m dot fuel plus m dot fuel, or sorry, there is no dots here. So this is gonna be 17 multiplied by m fuel, which is seven, divide by 10 to the negative 5 is going to give you m air is 1.12 multiplied by 10 to the negative 3 kilogram here we got this uh cp oh is this going to be cb or cv i made a mistake here this is cv because it's an auto cycle okay t3 and t2 this is what we need so from where we can get T2? So T2 from the isentropic relation in the combustion on the, on the isentropic compression stroke. So as I showed you from one to two, isentropic compression, right? So T2 over T1 is equal to R comma minus one. So T2, T1 is given to you 300 Kelvin. R is, don't know, gamma, it's 1.4 minus one. R. Error. I think you have an error up for the total mass. Uh, shouldn't it be 1.19 times 10 to the negative three? Not one point one two. Um, all right, that's good. It's not like big. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So it's one point one nine instead of one point one two. Thank you. Um. So R is as I, as I identified it at the beginning is V maximum over V minimum. And our V maximum or over V minimum here is V1 over V2, which is already given to you. Um, 
Well, there is a um, there is a typo, I think. Um, okay. Let's say that. This is V2 and this is V1. It's going to be 1.5, 10 to the 3, and over 0.15, 10 to the 3, and R is going to be 10. And get back here. 100. 10 to 1.4 minus 1. Okay, so from here we can we get T2. And T2 is, is going to be 753.6 Kelvin. Okay. Can you double check? T2? No, please. All right, so where's the equation yet? This is, let's say this is equation number one. So let's substitute all into equation number one. And by substituting all, by substituting into equation one, we get T3 is 4445.4 Kelvin. And for P3, how can I get P3? From the equation of state P3, P3 is equal to MRT3. And at the same time, we know that V2 is equal to V3 because it's constant the volume. So P3 multiplied by V3, which is V2, 0.15, 10 to the negative 3. M is the total mass, which is, yeah, 1.19. 1.19. Yeah, that's 1.19, 1, 1 10 to the negative 3, multiplied by R, 0.287, multiplied by T3, which is 4445.4. 4, 4, 4. So P3 is. Um, 10,121.70 kilopascal. This is the pressure at point three. This is the pressure after combustion and inside the combustion chamber. So this pressure is big enough to push back the piston and um, start the expansion stroke. So this is for the first requirement. We got T3, we got P3. Um, what about P1? We ask it about P1. So P1, how can I get P1? And we don't know P2, right? So as I told you, there is a link between P3 and P2, T3 over T2. Uh, sir, I have a question. Yeah. Um, because we said that V3 is equal to V2, uh, yep. we also not be able to use T3 is equal to um, R gamma minus 1 multiplied by T1? Because if the volume is equal, wouldn't the temperature also be equal in that instance? The temperature is not equal because... The, do you mean, like, do you want to... So it'd be... Um, so the T2... Yeah. T1 equals uh, the compression to gamma minus. Yeah, you, you cannot apply this. I tell you why. You cannot apply the isentropic relation into um, 
a constant volume or constant pressure uh, process, therm thermodynamic process. So only the isentropic, the isentropic relation has to be applied in to the compression stroke and expansion stroke. Okay. Okay, makes sense. Otherwise, Thank yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, in all other cases, you have to apply the um, this one, the equation of state. All right. So, so P three over P two. Thank you very very much for your question. P three over P two, T three over T two. All right. So for P three, we've got P three kilopascal. We need P two. And T3 is um, 4445.4. And T2, we got T2 here is 753.6. So P2 is 1715 kilopascal. And in order to get P1, because P1 and P2 are related um, from uh, the isentropic compression process. So when we have an isentropic relation uh, in this process, so we can apply it very straightforward. P2 over P1 is equal to R to the power gamma. So P2 here is 1715 over P1. Um, R is 10, gamma is 1.4. So then P1 is 68 kilopascal. Um, the comment that we're going to add here is that uh, this pressure is um, the suction pressure. Which is below 100 kilopascal, which is the atmospheric pressure. Um, so, so why P1 is not atmospheric? Because um, there is a suction. Um, at the beginning of the stroke, but we neglect the effect of the suction. Sometimes we neglect the effect of the suction and we assume it's uh, uh, atmospheric pressure. But for this one, he didn't give you P1 because he wanted you to identify it or calculate it. But otherwise he would be giving you P1 and, and T1 as atmospheric pressure and temperature, right? But uh, in, like in the in the real cases um there is suction pressure because the cylinder is sucking the air um, um from the uh, from the atmosphere and um and um like the process start so do you guys do you, do you guys have any questions so far I have 10 minutes for the second problem Hopefully I can make it. I don't know if I can make this done. All right, I'm, I'm solving problem number three for a diesel engine right now. And problem number five, uh, I, 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 will, I will solve it and upload it for you, okay? Problem number five, uh, where we have residual, because um, because you asked it about uh, if there is a problem with the residual. And so problem number five is uh, it's a problem that we have a residual mass on it and it's very straightforward. And so I will be, um, um, I, will, I will post the solutions as well, right? And if you guys have any question, uh, I didn't post my, my office hours yet uh so i'm gonna post it um soon for you right so if you if you have any questions just show show up in the in office hours and i will uh, try to answer all of your questions so problem number three diesel engine diesel cycle or diesel engine where the compression ratio is 20 so uh, another another differentiation between diesel cycle and um, an auto cycle. Uh, so the diesel cycle, the compression ratio of diesel cycle can go up to 75, 70, 60. Uh, it, it's very high. Sometimes it's very it's low, like starting from 20 uh, up to 75. But 
the auto cycle usually they it has a very low compression ratio all right so this is also one a different thing between auto and diesel cycles so because auto cycle is a light uh, light duty cycle and diesel cycle is a heavy duty cycle where you have uh, a very big um, um, engine and uh, very very big volume difference all right so this is the compression ratio q in is given q is given to you directly 1600 kilojoule per kilogram so he's giving you here the the q per unit kilogram all right so you don't have to account for any masses while solving the problem and uh, he's giving you also p1 is 101 kilopascal and t1 is 200 um, 298 kelvin and he also told you that air is the working flow so gamma is 1.4 and all other parameters uh, like cp and stuff and um, also so he is requesting you to get p3 t3 and sorry the, the efficiency the dz engine efficiency and per, mean effective pressure so i try to solve it in time i will I, I don't think I'm going to finish this on time, but um, I will continue solving it. If you guys want to stay, it's up to you. If you want to leave, it's up to you as well. So starting from uh, the beginning. Uh, so first of all, so in, in the last problem, I tried to solve it uh, in a logical order, like um, in, in, I started with the equation that I have to get T3 from, but I'm going to start here from the regular um, or the, the normal sequence of solving any problem, right? So normal sequence is you, you can write, you can write it in this way. So you start from the beginning, the first stroke is the isentropic, isentropic compression stroke, right? Um, so anything you is is unknown and you get is gonna be useful for you. Somehow it's gonna be useful for you, right? So that's T2 over T1, R gamma minus one. So we know T1, we don't know T2. And we can, we can, we obviously will we'll get, will uh, we'll be needing T2 in order to get T3, right? So T2 here over T1, which is 289, R is 20, gamma is 1.4 minus one. So T2 in this case is 732 Kelvin. And also, also you can get P2 from the same isentropic relation P2 over P1 is R to the power gamma. P2, P1 is 101 kilopascal, R20 gamma is 1.4. P2 in this case is 4962 kilopascal. All right. Any questions so far? All right, that's good. So we have QN, right? So if we try to write, so this is the first thing you, you can have. The second stroke is Q addition from two to three. But the Q addition here, Q addition at constant pressure. So Q from two to three. So Q input is M mass CP 
T3 minus T2. T3 is always higher than T2 because T3 is the temperature after the combustion stroke. So Qn is given to kilojoule per kilogram. So if we divide if we divide by the mass here, so Q this is given to you is 1600 kilojoule per kilogram. So that's why I told you, you don't have to take to care about the mass for this problem. CPU fare is 1.005 kilojoule per kilogram. T3 is unknown. It's gonna be known right now. T2 is 732. So from this equation, T3 is 2332 Kelvin. Sounds good. All right, so for P3, In order to get P3, as I told you, oh, let's write this here. Uh, from two to three, right? Um, P3, P3 is equal to RT, MRT3. P2, V2 is equal to MRT2. Um, two to three is constant to pressure, right? So the pressure, if we divide those together, P3 is going to be considered with P2, MR is MR. So we're going to left with V3 over V2 is equal to T3 over T2. We have T3, we have T2. And, um, we have V2, we don't know V3. So we're gonna use this V3 and return it back to this equation to get the pressure at point three, all right? So let's get V2, V2 first. So from the same equation of state, P2, um, All right, so just, uh, no, I don't think it's gonna be solved this way. Uh, is there a way to get P3? Is there a way we can get P3? Just a question, sir. Would it not be the same as P2 since it's caught constant pressure at that input? Sorry, say it again. Would P3, uh, yeah. would P3 not just be equal to P2 since it's constant pressure at that point? Or is that not safe to assume? Um, it's going to be, no, it's going to be the same pressure because the cycle is one, two, this is a PV diagram, one, two, three, four. So three and uh, two and three have, have the same pressure, but they don't have the same volume, you know? Does this answer your question? Okay, yeah, so you're trying to find the third volume, not the third pressure? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, I think, T3, I can get T3, T3, D2, do we have T2? Yeah. All right. So I think not nice. Okay. Okay. So um, as I told you, the mass is not going to be accounted here. So this volume 
is going to be the specific volume where it is the volume per unit mass. So P2, Z2, or let's, let's I'm gonna clarify it here, clarify it here, right? So P2, V2, where V, the, the capital V is the volume meter cube. The small V, I'll show you to you right now, T2, right? So uh, we know P2, right? So if we divide this by mass, this is V2, which is the volume per unit mass, right? Because the mass is gonna be the same everywhere, so it doesn't it doesn't affect anything, right? So from here, P2, uh, from here we can get P. Uh, uh, so P2 is uh, 4962 kilopascal uh, as I get it from here, where, yeah, as I get it from here, and V2 is equal to, uh, V2 is unknown, R is 0 0.287, T2 is uh, 732. So V2 in this case is gonna be something which is gonna be meter cube bare per kilogram, right? So ha have you guys seen this before, the specific volume? I think yes. Have you seen this before, guys? Yes, we have. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So this is one thing. And if we get back here, so this is going to be by substituting it, this into here, we will get, we get V3 is equal to T3 over T2 multiplied by V2. But I don't know, I don't know the values. I didn't calculate the values of this. Um, so T3 is 2332, T2 was 732, and V2. Now we get V3. And when we get V3 in kilogram per meter cube, then we substitute into P3. V3 is equal to RT3. And so P3 is equal to R 0.287. T3 is um, 2332 over V3. So from here, you can get the pressure at point three. So very quickly, the very, very quickly, diesel engine, diesel engine efficiency is from the correlation I gave to you in the, at the beginning. So it's all function of theta and gamma and the pressure, the, the, the compression ratio. So it's gonna be one over R, which is 20, gamma is 1.4 minus one, beta. Do you remember beta? Beta is V3 over V2. Beta is V3 over V2 about 1.4 minus 1 over gamma which is 1.4 pita again is v3 over v2 all minus 1 right so v3 over v2 again from the equation from this equation where from this equation is equal to, I just need the ratio, I don't need the values, right? T3 over T2. So I just need the ratio and I know the temperatures already. So it's 2332 over T2, which is 732. So we get the ratio is around 3.19. 
and when we substitute it into here, so the diesel engine efficiency is going to be 0.497. All right, so this is it so far. Um, I didn't want to uh, exceed the uh, tutorial time. Um, so do you guys have any question? You guys have any questions so far, was that clear? Let me get back here. All right, was that clear? All right, so I'm, I'm, I will be posting. Uh, when will you be uploading these stones? So I, I will upload it right now. Um, all right, no fun. So for Shahrooz, um, you have a question from the assignment. Um, Okay. Um, can you send me the, uh, an email with your question, Jaruz? I will reply you immediately. All right, thank you guys for attending the tutorial as long as you don't have any questions. So uh, you, you, you are good to go. Do you guys have any questions so far? I was just gonna ask about the graph for question number two. From the assignment, I, I didn't check the assignments up to now. So, if you just give me, if you just email me the your question, I will reply to your email immediately because I didn't check the assignment up to now. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Because we also emailed the prof and he said you're not supposed to plot the graph, but I'm All not right. sure he didn't respond because he doesn't know. Like we were given this question about plotting the graph. So right. I'm confused if we actually have to plot the graph and uh, if we are plotting the graph, then because uh, I got the value, then everything is just the assumptions we were making in the assignment too, uh, mm -hmm. question two, but I'm not sure how the graph is going to look like. All right, let me, let me check the assignment. All right, for question number two. Power of an engine and number of cylinders. Okay. So you question about uh, plotting the graph, right? Yes, uh, just that, because uh, my answer is like, let's just say if I put that into the equation, it would be y equals x to the power one third. So do I just plot that or like, do I have to consider some other things as well? All right, so can you just give me a moment? Yeah, I'll try to find out that. All right. Um, I cannot find the, okay, I cannot find the material. I don't think he need to, f yeah, so um, the power unit, okay. So there is no graph, yeah, there is no graph required. Can you still lose me? 
So like we just uh so just solve the question and don't plot the graph? No, don't don't just don't plot the graph. Yeah, it's not requested. It is just that um, we needed the relation and you, you you start the relation. Yes, I did the relation uh, with the power and the yep. power weight. Yeah, I did that. I did the whole thing. Now I was like kind of confused on the plotting. So no, yeah. No, just, you don't need to plot it. You don't need it. Okay. So don't worry about it. And uh, from where did you start the derivation? Sorry? Yeah, like from what? Um, parameter you started your derivation because i did i did uh, uh power over weight yeah that's right sounds good uh, and at the end, yeah and at the end you get the and c uh, to the power one uh, one third number of slender mm, one that's third cor that's that's correct yeah yeah thank you that's that's totally correct yeah so i don't have to plot the graph right you don't have to yeah i'm the one who okay. is marking the assignment so you don't have to yeah. okay then thank okay. you no yeah problem. thanks for All your right. question thank yeah, you yeah no worries. no worries have a good day bye you, you too bye so does any one of you guys have any other questions